everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am a freelance artist and teacher hoping to inspire creativity. If you would like more videos like these, please take a second to like and subscribe down below. It really helps in the algorithm of YouTube to help get my videos seen to more people. If you want to receive notifications of when I go live, please make sure to hit the bell and choose all notifications. If you have any questions during or after the class, make sure to pop a comment down below and I will answer it as soon as I can. I'll be leaving timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the start of class, but I will be sharing announcements as well as supplies, so make sure to stick around for that. If interested in learning more about my classes, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and feel free to check me out on Patreon where I teach exclusive classes to those who support me. In Patreon, I also give traceables for all of my live classes, including this one. Lastly, if you would like to share your work after class with me and others who painted along with us, please head over to Facebook as I have an artist community where you can share your finished painting with us. I'll leave links for all of that in the description box below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome back to another live class. Um, as you may have guessed, from the title of this video, we are doing this cute sheep with a flower crown. Uh, if you've been with me for a while, you would have known that last year around the same time, we did a cow with a flower crown. So if you did that class, this will be kind of a complimentary uh, painting to that one. And if you like this sort of thing, make sure you go back and paint that other one so then you'll have two that kind of match each other. And you can also match the colors if you want to. Um, for this one, we're going a little bit more of like a greenish background. I think the other one was a little bit more on the blue side, or you can do, um, more of an abstract background in terms of colors. Like maybe you can do a pink background or some other complementary color. Uh, feel free to do whatever you want with the background. The original photo I had for this one, um, had like a ton of sheep behind it in this grassy land. So I kind of wanted to keep the element of kind of grass in the background without getting too detailed because um, I really wanted to focus on the sheep and all of the flowers. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy this class. Um, let's go ahead and go over all of our supplies and we will get right to it. Um, the first thing we're going to go over is my traceable. So my traceables are free to all patrons. So if you already support me on Patreon, you have access to this. Um, for those of you who are not patrons, if you want access to this, it's just $5 for the whole month and you'll get access to not only everything within this month, all the other free classes that I will do during this month, um, but you'll also get access to all previous classes. Um, they're content and their uh, class traceables as well. So you get loads of stuff for just $5. Um, and you can cancel after one month or you can stay for the next month for more traceables. Um, it's totally up to you. And then I also have other tiers uh, with with more classes and things like that exclusive to Patreon, but we'll get into that later. So this is the traceable. You do not need the traceable in order to do this class, but it is very helpful for those who maybe don't wanna draw, feel like they can't draw, or just don't wanna spend the time drawing. Um, so the, the basic shape is pretty simple. Um, you just have to figure out where you want your face. Um, you have two eyes, two lines going down, the little nose, and then the body going off to the side. Um, I'm going to keep this up here in case you want to draw it, but this is, um, this is available in my Patreon. I've already, uh, I've already linked it down below. Uh, in the chat and after the class I will add it um, to the video and the video description as well. Um, okay, so that's that. I am using an 11 by 14 stretched canvas, just a regular one from Michaels. Um, I think it's from Michaels or Hobby Lobby, one of those. Um, and But yeah, you can use a different size if you want. Um, my traceable also comes in a um, 9 by 12 as well as the 11 by 14 and if you're a patron and you want a different size uh, feel free to just message on that post and I can resize it it's really easy to do that um, so I can do that for you um, I have two glasses of water you don't need to but I like to have two just in case one of them gets really really dirty I don't have to get up and get a new water uh, paper towel I have a palette knife that I like to use for all of my classes I will uh, I will mix paint with this. It's really great if you have a flat palette to use a palette knife to mix 
paint because not only can you mix a large amount of paint without wasting it in a brush, you also don't get your water dirty before you've even started painting. So those are two perks that I highly recommend um, and they're just, it's great. I love it. Um, obviously you want a palette and let's go over some brushes real fast. Um, the key brushes that I like to keep on hand for pretty much like all of my classes um, are going to be, let's see, are going to be these four brushes. I have a large filbert that I use for the backgrounds. You can swap this out with a, a flat brush if you want. Let me put this down a little bit. Um, if you want like a flat brush, you can use that. Um, or um, whatever, I don't know, whatever brush you like to do for the background. I typically like to have a filbert brush because I feel like it leaves less streaks and it's easier to blend with, but that's just my opinion. Um, that's my favorite that I've uh, figured out that I like to use. I also have a smaller filbert. This is going to be really key for getting those um, really nice rounded edges in all your flowers. So I do, I do recommend having a smaller filbert um, as well as a smaller round brush, maybe smaller medium round brush, and then a liner brush. You don't need a liner brush, but I like to have them on hand um, for any little details um, you might need in this uh, class. And especially since we're doing kind of like a bouquet, um, a bouquet on the head of the sheep, you might want little strands of grass or whatever the case um, coming, peeking out behind it. Um, so that would be fun. Um, in terms of colors with this class, this is kind of one of those classes that is just like choose your own adventure. Um, I chose pinks and yellows because I felt like it really popped up against the background. But if you wanted to add like purple or blue flowers in here, um, or just pops of red or anything really, um, I'm sure that it would all look lovely. Um, so pick your favorite flower. I will be kind of showing um, how to do maybe potentially a one stroke rose in here um, if we have time. So just kind of have fun with it. Figure out what colors you want to use. Um, if you did the previous one, you can always correlate these colors with the colors that you've already painted. Um, yeah, feel free to have fun with it. Um, but in regards to colors, the colors that I, I will be getting out today um, are going to be my black and my white. And these are, don't be confused by the, um, the bottles. These are full body acrylics, not craft acrylics. Um, sometimes I get questions about what I'm using. They are full body. They are from Hippie Crafter. Um, they send me paints and it's really great. Super nice of them. Um, but I highly recommend full body acrylics and not the craft. Um, you can use the craft. It's just, they're already practically watered down and you might have to do two or three coats to get the same coverage. Um, so black, white, and then I have a brown so we can kind of tint the green because the green that I have is very bright green. Um, I find it most useful to have a bright green because then I can tint it to the more greenish brown yellow color or more of a blue whitish color. Like I can, I can tone it down and pretty much go any direction from this bright green. If I start with like a darker green, it's harder to get brighter without getting um, muddy in my opinion. Um, and then I also have a couple yellows depending on what color of flowers that you want to do. So I've, I have um, medium yellow and yellow ochre. And then I do have a pink. <coughs> and then I have a like a bluish green which is my viridian and then a phthalo blue. And these are kind of to help create the different tones of green in the um, in the bouquet as well as like the background. So yeah, um, you don't have to ever have the same exact colors as me. I am very much a believer of use what you have. You can pretty much um, use what you have and pretty much get the same um, effect or same colors. Uh, if you have questions, make sure to comment them below. Um, more often than not, someone else might have the same question um, and that's helpful for them. Um, let me grab my water real fast. Um, 
Okay. Um, so yeah, feel free to pick different colors if you plan on um, if you plan on painting different color flowers. Essentially, that is pretty much all of the supplies. Um, let me go over real fast uh, just some announcements, what we painted last week, and um, what's going on in Patreon right now. So last week we painted a really, really pretty golden sunset, and this was what we painted. I think it came out really, really well. I really, really love it. Um, it's really bright, really pretty colors, and I love the subtlety of the flowers um, and the field behind it. Um, I think the clouds came out really fun. Um, if you have troubles with clouds, these were actually a lot easier than I anticipated them being. Um, even though I paint clouds all the time, they were, I don't know, I just felt like they were just a lot easier than I anticipated. Um, so if you struggle with clouds, this is a fun class. Um, the colors can be difficult, so give yourself grace on that one. Um, the, like the transitions, because it's like it goes from yellow to like brownish purple and then blue. Um, but overall, it was a really fun class. I also have a ton of other classes on clouds. Um, I think it was either last month or the month before that, we did uh, a palm tree with, like, palm trees with clouds. Um, I've done ocean stuff with clouds. So uh, if you want help with clouds or you want to go paint that, definitely go do it. Um, and yeah, have fun. In Patreon, I know I've shared this before, but not everybody's here for every class. Um, so in Patreon, so for the $10 tier and up, I have exclusive classes just for you. Um, this is now available in my Patreon and I'm super excited for it. I love how it came out. Um, I also have an elephant in there as well. And every other month I plan on doing one of these with like an endangered species. So if you have any, uh, suggestions on what we should paint next, make sure to comment below or in Patreon. Um, I would love to hear what you think we might want to paint next. Uh, but yeah, so this is now available in my Patreon um, for the magenta tier uh, and above. And then in one of the highest tiers for painting, uh, it's called the cobalt tier. We are It's where we go week by week and we paint a little bit each week, about an hour to an hour and a half. We go painting every week and we are kind of in the middle of this one we have done two sessions and uh, we finished this session last uh, yesterday and I'm so excited about how it's coming out. We're going to end up putting water drops on the leaves behind it um, and just filling in everything. I think it's coming out really, really cute. I forgot how much I love frogs and after I started painting this, there's this little cute little smile and I'm really excited for it. So if you want to ever paint with anything in Patreon, even if we're painting it currently and it's live, um, you can, all of my classes in my Patreon or on Facebook um, and YouTube, all of my classes are recorded somewhere and stay. So if, if it's live on YouTube, it stays on YouTube. If it's live or recorded in Patreon, it stays in Patreon. And if you become a patron at that level, um, you will have access to not only that class, and everything within that month, but everything that's previous. So it's a really fun deal. Um, and I'm looking forward to finishing that one. Okay, you are here for the sheep. So let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> okay, so hopefully you've gotten this drawn on a little bit. Um, and if not, go ahead and pause it and sketch it and <laughs> get ready for it. We are going to be doing the background first. And I didn't really draw in the flowers because I couldn't decide if I liked the sizing and placing of everything. Um, essentially, I put these two photos together and created the background myself. Um, so when I did that, I just, I took a bouquet of, um, of flowers and then I added some other flowers in there. And because it's like I didn't arrange it myself and try to make the flowers, it's it was difficult to try to fit everything in. So I'm just going to be creating it kind of as I go. Um, I think I might make the flowers maybe a little bit bigger or 
um, just kind of change up some things. So um, I'll probably use this for sure as a reference, um, but if you want to change up where everything is, go for it. Do that. Um, yeah, I'll probably be doing that a little bit. Um, but what I will say is you're going to want to bring in that blue and that background color up until um, about the like the top of the head because um, when we put in those flowers, we don't want to have just pure white behind it because then we'll have to cover all that up. You want to be able to have that blue sky behind it so that when we have a flower popping out, it's not we don't feel like the need to like cover it all up with flowers. We can have it popping out and not, you know, have the sky behind it. And does that make sense? So have that background come all the way down to the top of the ears. All right, let's go ahead and do <coughs> our background. We're going to create the soft blue color and then also the green color. So I'm going to grab my white. Just like stuck my hand in white. All right, so the top of it is super, super light when it comes to the blue. So most of it's going to be white. So just a tiny little bit of blue. It's not going to take much. I put a little bit more white over there. And then I'm going to grab my green. Maybe a little bit of this Viridian green, kind of to give it that cool green effect. And then I'm also going to get out some brown so I can kind of make it a little bit more of an earthy tone. And I apologize if I'm like itching my nose throughout class. We, uh, my allergies, I have seasonal allergies, and it's been like really bad this week, and I realized I spent like two hours outside today with the kids, and by the end of it, I was just like, oh my gosh, what is happening? Oh yeah, I have allergies. Why am I outside this long? <laughs> so I apologize. Um, okay, well, I'm going to take my, uh, my palette knife and go ahead and mix some of these colors together. Uh, let's see, I'm going to do the blue first, so I'm just going to put a tiny bit of blue in this white and mix it together. And you want it fairly light. And even just that tiny amount of blue. I actually think that's like the perfect color. And I used phthalo blue. Okay. That's pretty much all I need. All right, so I'm gonna wipe that off and I just put it in between my paper towels. I always have two, I always have two and I just put it in between there and um, wipe it off. All right, now I'm going to grab um, green and brown and make, the, I'm gonna make the darkest color first because then I can always make it lighter. Um, I'm going to mix a tiny bit of the bluish green in here. And I'm going to mix the brown in here and I might need I might need some yellow. We will see. Yeah. I'm gonna need a tiny bit of yellow and that'll kind of create the more of like the yellowish earthy tone too. If you have like a, a hooker's green or something like that, um, that you wanna use that you already, you know, you don't feel like you need to, um, play around with in order to get the color you want. You can just use that. Don't feel like you have to add all these colors together to get the color you want. Mm. 
I'm just playing around with the colors with different quantities of the brown, the yellow, the green, and the viridian green. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of white to it. Just to soften it a bit. Okay, and I think I have a color that I like. Um, but I might add just a little bit of black to it just to like gray it out a little bit. It's got a little bit too much like brightness color in it. And since I already have white in it, adding black will gray it out and darken it. I like that. So now that I have a good amount of it, okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start from the top because that. I don't want to lose that. It's okay if I don't get all the way to the darkness here, but I don't want to bring the green up and then end up losing out on this little bit of sky. So I'm gonna start with the sky first, bring it down, go into white, and then slowly start adding that green, okay? So I'm gonna grab my large brush, my large filibert, get it wet, dab it off just a little bit, and I'm gonna go into the blue and focus on the very top first. And I'm gonna put it on just like the very top, like inch. And just um, when I get that paint on there, I'm gonna go all the way across it and blend it down. Now I'm gonna take some white and I'm gonna put it at the bottom of it. And then after you do that, you can go and kind of crisscrosses and blend that in. And I'm just going up and down, kind of into the blue and then back down into the white, blending that. And once you've got it blended a little bit, you can go all the way across in big, long strokes and that will blend that together. I'm gonna do the same thing going into just the white
Oops, there's some green in there. And you're just going to do the same thing that you just did, the straight white into the kind of blended white. And then you're going to go all the way across. If you wanted to add some clouds, you could do that. And then you're going to slowly start adding your green. I'm going to take some of this white off to the side and just start to add a little bit of green. And you're going to keep doing that, that same process of um, adding the color just right under, right under it and then blending that line and going all the way across it. And go all the way across, blending that into that white. And I'm going to go into the, a little bit more of the green, blend it into the white that I have. Go down below it. Blend that into the, the greenish part, and you're just going to keep working your way down. Slowly adding more and more green. Just remember that instead of going all the way across, you're going to not go across your... um your sheep, obviously. And if you get to a part where this like this part's already dried, just go ahead and add a little bit of white to it. A little bit of white to your brush.
So at this point, I'm just going in just straight with my green. And I'm going on pretty thick so that I can make sure um, that it's covering everything because I don't plan on doing a second coat. I'm going to go ahead and do the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and rinse out my brush. And the next step is I'm going to take my black and I'm going to color in the eyes and the nose so that when we're going over it with our other colors, we're not going to lose um, we're not going to lose out on where everything is. Yeah, that can that can either be um, the comment that I'm responding to is um, I have such a hard time with blending backgrounds, and I think it's because I'm not loading enough paint. Um, yeah, it can be either one of two problems: either you don't have enough paint or you don't have enough water. Um, typically, when I'm doing a one layer background, I am I am loading on as much paint as I can, um, especially when I'm working with greens or other colors that tend to be a little bit more translucent. Um, if you have time, it really is better to do, if we did another coat of this, um, it would be way more smooth and way better. Um, but um, for the purpose of this class, like I think this is totally fine and it's okay that there's kind of like hiccups in the background because that's not our focus, it's kind of just like a blurred out background. Um, if you want it perfectly smooth, I would I would have it dry and then do another coat of that and it would come out probably way better. But I will say that definitely having, um, it's better to do two thinner coats than it is to do one thicker coat. Um, but even if you did a thick coat, let it dry and you can do another coat. Um, but yeah, I would say try to have more paint. Um, if it's essentially, you'll know if you have too much paint, um, if, if you, if you don't have enough paint, then you're going to see a lot of the texture of the, of the white background and there's not going to be any paint to like blend with. 
Um, if you have too much water, then it's going to blend really easy, but you're going to see like every single stroke. Um, and if you have too much paint, um, well, on one, on I would say that it would be hard to have too much paint um, in regards to doing this type of style. Um, but I would say like if it's taking forever to dry or you have like clumps of paint, you probably have too much paint. Um, but yeah, just play around with how much paint you have um, and don't be afraid. I, I think I've said this a lot um, when working with beginners, especially when uh, like my in-person events back when like pre-COVID when I did in-person events. Um, don't be afraid to put on too much paint. Um, it's funny because beginners are never afraid to put too much paint on their palette. If they're like doing it, they just put like loads of paint. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's way too much. But then when they try to put it on the canvas, they're like afraid to put it on the canvas. So it's always interesting. Um, Hi, Samantha, I've been called into work. Will there be a recording available? Yes, this, all of my live classes are recorded and stay um, on my YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe so you can find me later. Um, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and put in my eye. And we'll be going over this later again. So don't be, you know, you don't have to get it perfect. Um, just make sure it's filled in for the most part. And we can always come back to it. Okay, then I'm also going to do a black line where I know the nose is. And I'm going to do the lower lip. Now that that's done, we're gonna go ahead and do a first coat of our um, of our sheep. So let's go ahead and get our colors out. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off um, this section of green background because I just don't need it anymore. And I would like to have the space for my other colors. That's um, this is actually one of the my favorite things about a palette like this is that it's super super easy to clean. Not only after class, but literally during class. Like you saw how easy that was. You just scrape it off, and now I have so much more like room to, <laughs> to play with other colors. Um, okay, I'm going to mix my white with some brown and a hint of yellow if you have yellow ochre then use that if not that's okay um, just use whatever yellow you have yellow ochre is essentially just yellow and brown together with maybe like a hint of black and white um, but it's really close to yellow anyways so I'm going to take some, oops, that's too much. Start off with a tiny, tiny amount because any, um, any color that you have is going to really, really colorize your white. 
Um, and if you put too much in, then it's going to take a lot more white to kind of fix it. So whatever color you come up with, it's probably going to, going to be the darker color, the darkest color of your um, in here. And it doesn't have to be that dark yet. Um, we're just going to get kind of that color-ish. I'm going to take some of this, and because I like this color, but it's a little bit more about like the lighter tone, lighter tones of dark. Um, I'm going to darken it up a little bit with some brown and black. And then I'm going to grab some other stuff and do a little bit of brown and yellow. Just kind of see the different colors that we can play with. Because a lot of sheep have kind of like a yellowish undertone. And this is a nice golden color. So my first color is my mostly white and then a tiny bit of yellow and brown. My second color is um, half of that. So half of my light color plus a little bit more brown and a tiny bit of black. And then this kind of golden color is white, brown, and a, and a little bit more yellow. So those are kind of the colors I'm working with. I think I might even add a tiny bit more black and brown to this darker color. Just to make it even darker. Okay, so we have kind of like a trio of color tones. Um, and then let's go ahead and make our, like our just normal kind of white tone. I'm just gonna have this white and then just mix in a tiny bit of my lightest brown, just so it's not pure white. Cause we'll be adding pure white to like the face and the back. So we wanna have a off white color to add that to. So this will be our first coat, like our base, and then we'll add some other colors along with it. All right. Let's go ahead. I'm going to get my large brush. Make sure that there's no green in it. And I'm going to start off with my lightest color. My I'm going to call this my white. And just over the green, I'm just going to kind of go in little small circles. It should be um, dry by this point. But again, this is just our first coat, so it's okay if it's not um, going over it perfectly. I'm gonna grab some white and put it right next to the neck. And just fill in this area and I'm going to go in with a darker color and I'm just going to mix that in to it's going to mix it in and then I'm 
I'm going to start coming into the neck area with some of my darker colors. I'm going to go I'm gonna go pretty dark here. And I'm going to go in little tiny circles. This is partly to emulate the kind of curly fur that they have, but it's also to be able to blend that. I'm just doing pretty small circles with this all, just trying to blend it. And as I come over here, I'm gonna go a little bit more into the, my lighter color is gonna be a little bit more of that like yellowy tone that we created. into more of the white. And then just circles again, kind of blend that a little bit. And I would, I would highly recommend don't make it perfectly blended. I mean, that's usually harder, but it doesn't need to be, it shouldn't be. It should be kind of like, I mean, textured, essentially. You want it to be textured. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to a smaller brush. I'm going to just put in some of the, the lightest dark part I'm, and I'm just kind of mapping in where these kind of medium spots are and now I'm just gonna add white to like most of this just allowing that to kind of blend a little bit and if you went over the ears like I did, make sure that you go over that with a bunch of white, like a good solid amount um, of white, especially the one over here because it's a little bit darker. Because we went over this with black, we can go over it. I'm making sure that this edge is not straight because these guys are fluffy. So I can go in small circles, just making sure that the edge of this is 
fluffy and not straight. And this is the part of the painting where you're like, what is going on? This looks awful. I want to give up. Don't. This is called the ugly stage. Most paintings go through this stage. Some worse than others. And animals are one of those that I feel like most often not. They just, they just don't look good at all <laughs> in the ugly stage. So just know that this is normal. I'm going to add a little bit more of like some dark shade stuff over here just to try to really figure out where all my, my dark shading is. I'm going to grab some of this yellow. Maybe even get a little bit darker next to the eyes. Just kind of roughly putting it in the area that I feel like it should be. And then I'm going to go in with a little bit of black and my darkest color and put in here. And this is so that I have that dark color to go off of when we do come back to it. And I'm just dry brushing this on, going in circles. Going a little bit more into my dark colors, just kind of going in those circles. I'm really trying to tone in, like tune in to the, um, the like the contrast of colors. At this point, I think this is a really good first coat. It really does lay out the groundwork for everything. Um, I'm gonna do one more coat of white on the ears. And when I say white, I mean like the off-white that we created, not pure white. And if you want to, you can even go into your dark part and start putting in the darkness of the ear. Do that over on the other side too.
that's pretty much good. So now is the time to figure out where our flowers are going to be. So if you already have these mapped out, that's great. If not, um, now we kind of get to figure all that out. Um, so I'm going to take just a um, light colored, um, I'm going to do this kind of yellowish brown color that we used kind of for the yellowish fur over there. And I'm going to get it pretty watery so that it's it'll dry fast. I can wipe it off if I need to, um, but it's dark enough where I can kind of just like see where everything is. Um, the one that I really like is the one that's right here. Kind of comes out like this. I'll do another one over here. I'm going to do a rose here. and a rose here. I'm gonna do, I like the flowers coming out on this side. And the flower that's going there. And there's another flower that's coming out here. I'm going to put another one that's coming out this direction and another one that's that direction. And then I'm going to have a couple things coming down over here. Okay, so now that we have um, that space, I'm going to go ahead and color in some brown and all the spaces that I'm going to put in my my sunflowers. And I'll put some other ones, um, maybe going like some other directions. Um, so now I'm going to get out my pink and make a little bit of a lighter pink so I can get in a first coat of my pink and it's gonna be mostly white let me just um, start by saying it's gonna be mostly white so it's gonna have that opaqueness
And then I'm also going to do pink um, with these flowers. So I'm just using my brush to create some petals that go out. And then I'm going to create some other um, flowers out here. It's probably good. It's only two main roses. Maybe I'll have another rose out here. Kind of in the background. And for the petals of the flower, of the, of the sunflowers, we're going to do this first coat in white so that when we do it in yellow, it's going to be vibrant. If we try to do it in yellow right now, um, it's not going to be as vibrant. And we'll have to do like three or four coats. Um, so I'm just going to do little bits of um, of little teardrops. So I'm using my filbert and I'm holding it sideways and I'm going to put it down and then flick into it. And I'm going to overlap a little bit. And depending on which direction you want it to um, be, you might have petals that are kind of coming over, over it. You're just going to create those all the way around. It's a little close, a closer look. I'm just creating these by pushing it down and pulling it in, pushing it down, pulling it in, pushing it down pulling it in. And 
then you can make the petals pointy by going back out and flicking out instead of in. Okay, so now I can get a little bit of a better look of where, if there's like anything missing. And I think I have a good amount in the middle. I think I want one little piece of yellow over here. So I'm just gonna put some, um, I'm gonna put some yellow over here. That's gonna be like kind of behind the ear a little bit. And maybe some like yellow in here behind the pink. And we'll add in any other places with like some green. All right, let's go ahead and do some more coats on our um, our sheep. Okay, we can do a little bit more detail on here. I'm gonna take my pure white and I'm going to add it to the back here. And I'm going to add it in little circles so that I can keep that texture going. And I'm going to try not to cover up all of the, um, the darkness under it. And I want this to be texturized, so if there's little globs of paint and stuff like that, I'm okay with that. I'll even dab a little bit so the little pieces of fur kind of catch the light. I'm going to dab to keep the texture and on the end I'm just going to slightly blur it by adding just a little bit of like dry brushing on the very edge of it so it's not one clean line but it kind of like blurs out the edge a little bit. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush and using my that brush I'm just going to do little kind of circles a little bit kind of randomizing my movement going down I'm 
I'm going to go into some darker um, paint. Start moving into some darker paint. Just adding that texture still. I'm going to add a little bit of darkness, maybe some black in here. Just adding a little bit of a little bit of contrast in here with the darkness. And it looks really, really good from far away, but if you look up really close, I'm just doing little squiggly lines. There's nothing really fancy to it. Just giving the illusion, just giving enough detail for our mind, our mind to play tricks on us and believe that it's fur, it's curly fur, because we know, we know what it's supposed to be. So if we give just enough information that our mind believes it, it fills in all the gaps and we don't even have to paint them. It's really crazy. Um, so as we kind of move our way back out, I'm going lighter and lighter with what's on my brush. I go into more of like the yellowish color. Kind of add that yellowish tone over here. So I'm just using kind of the rest of the paint that's on my brush to add just a little bit of shadow over here. And I'm picturing that the most of the light is coming from the right side. 
Um, so I kind of have a little bit more shadow on the left side. Um, which means that the brightest part over here is going to be this light side, the right side that's closest to um, the light. just kind of blurring out the edge just ever so slightly just by adding a little bit of texture to the bottom just realized that I haven't done the bottom at all so I'm gonna go ahead and do that before my paints dry Going to rinse that out. All right, how y'all doing? Let me know. Okay, we're gonna move on to its face, um, and we're going to. I'm gonna grab. Oh, let's see. I'm gonna grab my pure white, a little bit more white. And I'm gonna do the front part, and then move out from there but before I do that I want to create a little bit of darkness on the nose so I'm just going to use a dry brush and put it in the center and then kind of brush it out from there I'm going to do the same thing around his nose or like his mouth And that'll just give a little bit of darkness so that when we're putting in that light, um, we'll have something to put it up against.
So I'm going to start from the top and grab some white, maybe like a tiny bit of water, but mostly just paint. And just like the cow, their fur on their nose kind of goes to the center. Um, I'm just going to grab my filbert and just kind of brush inward. And it's not super noticeable, but when you look at the face, you can see that the, you know, the fur does go in a direction and that's really all we're going for. Just to give that ever so slight hint of direction. just going to wiggle my brush over here because these brush these um, little furs are kind of going out into there and I did add I added a light a little bit of the darkest and kind of mixed that with my Um, I mixed that with my white on my brush. And I'm going to go into some white and my darkest color and kind of create a new color to do these little furs that are going out from here. I'm going to make sure that I have a good amount of water and you can use a liner brush if you want, you don't have to. Just do a little bit of tiny fur. I'm going to come behind here with some white. Just kind of put in a little bit of a little bit of detail. Not a whole lot. Doesn't need a whole lot. I'm going to give it a little bit of an eyelid just with my white right there. And once that's dried and we do the eye again, then we can put in the um then we can put in the eyelashes. For right now, I'm going to do some white into the ear. I'm 
gonna do the same thing over here except most of this over here is going to be that white because this is the side that is lighter go under the eye a little bit of white under the eye on both sides I'm really gonna lay the white on thick on this side of the ear. Do a little bit of blocking that out, a little bit of that darker color here, dry blush it, kind of blend it in. I'm gonna come in with some white and give this section some definition. And I'm just gonna brush in. Just kinda dry brush in a little bit. And his chin is white. His white, his, uh, his chin has little white furs on it. So if you want to do that with a liner brush or just your, um, it should re your regular um, round brush, you can do either. Just make sure that um, it's pointed and you can get those little tiny hairs. I'm gonna do one more sweep through with my black in the nose and kind of just fix up that area because it's kind of looking
crooked, even though I know it's not crooked. Um, it looks crooked because of where the, the shadows and the highlights are. So I'm just going to kind of fix that area a little bit. And then we'll have about 20 minutes to finish up our flowers. Now that I've got in the black parts, I'm going to go around it with that dark brown. Mix in with a little bit of raw umber and just put in some of the actual like nose part that surrounds that. I'm going to grab my liner brush just for this nose part because this is the part that is closest to um, us and the camera and so we're going to want to use a small brush because this is the part that has the most detail that and the eyes which I'm going to go ahead and do black so by the time that I'm done doing the nose it'll be dry and I can do the eyelashes So I'm going to do the nose. I'm just doing tiny little strokes. pulling down towards the nose or towards the middle of the face. And you can't see it much um, over the rest of the face because it is um, white. Right. 
that's pretty much all we need for that. You can add little tiny dots for the whisker area, which is not, it doesn't have much whiskers that I can see, but they do have little, little tiny dots here. However much detail you want to give them is totally up to you. Okay, now that the eyes are um, dry, I'm gonna take my brush and give some eyelashes. going to paint the inner eye kind of that grayish dark gray as well as the under everything around is a little bit gray Now I think we are good to start adding detail um, on our flowers. I think our I think the um, maybe with the exception of the eyes, we still have to, I have to wait till my black dries to do the um, the little like the eye color, um, which you can see on at least the right side. I might put it on the left side too, um, but then also the reflection. Um, so let's go ahead and finish our flowers and then we'll be all done. So we have about 20 minutes to kind of finish this up. Um, I'm going to work on the insides of the, um, of the sunflowers. I'm going to add black to the outer edge. And I'm doing it in a very organic way of just like kind of putting the color there. I'm not doing it in any specific way. And then I'm going to get a little bit of blue to add with my black and then a little bit of white to do kind of like that middle section. It's kind of like a bluish gray. Just kind of put it in the middle area. And then I'm going to grab my yellow ochre with just a tiny, tiny bit of brown. And I'm going to put that kind of around. I'm going to just dab it around, like in between those two layers. Again, just enough color and information for your brain to fill in the gaps. And that 
that's what the inside looks like. I'm going to darken this one just a tiny bit. I feel like the there's a little bit too much light color, but I like the other ones. Um, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do another. Um, I'm gonna do another coat of white on the all of the flowers that just need it the flowers that like um, potentially maybe mixed with the brown or just went over something dark I'm just gonna go over it again with white so that the yellow can pop through Okay, for our second coat of um, flowers, the, for the, um, I'm gonna do the, the main flowers, like the kind of daisy looking flowers first. And I'm going to Mix together this pink and I'm actually going to put a tiny bit of black in it put a little bit too much black because I want it to be a little bit um, like Just not as bright as the other flowers. Okay, I think this is the perfect color. It's almost like a like a mauve pinkish color. All right. These are the daisy colors. I 
put a little bit more white in it. I think that's really it's a really really pretty color um, in my opinion I'm gonna put a couple smaller flowers next to everything So now what we're going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of this pink and put it in the middle. So that when we go over it with our lighter pink we will see it. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a either a flat brush or preferably a um, a uh, angled brush. I don't have an angled brush that's particularly small enough, so I'm going to be using my small um, I'm going to be using a small flat brush. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to double load your brush. So what that means is you're going to have a light color like white on one side and a dark color on the outside. I go more in depth in this in a class in my um, in my Patreon. So if you're interested in learning more about this, um, feel free to sign up for that. It's available to all patrons. Um, but you're going to just go, uh, I don't know if you can see on my palette because it's kind of off camera right here I'm going to go over it a bunch of times so I'm just dipping both sides in my white and it's gonna blend together and I'm going to focus on the outer edge first and you'll see it to go, come together I'm only going to do about like three of these at a time like three strokes before I go get more and I'm focusing on the back layer front because we're going to um, we're going to move from front to back And I'm just doing kind of like the back layers first. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do a little bit more dipping, go back into here, let it blend in the middle a little bit, go back in. So I actually first learned this um, when I was face painting. We would do um, one stroke roses all the time because there are like specific palettes for it. Uh, 
Um, so now we're going to go in and we're going to do another one. And you can start to see the rose is starting to appear. If it blends too much, make sure you go back into that white or that other color so you really have two definitive colors. I'm going to go ahead and scooch in a little bit. Hopefully you can see a little bit better now. Go into my white and my pink. And now I'm going to I'm going to do a little um, a little scallop up. And then I'm going to pull it around. You might have to replay this section a little a couple times to really get it. It does take practice. See the pretty rose appear? You just have to make sure, keep, keep in mind what side the white is on and what side the pink is on. Because if your brush gets too muddy, you gotta start, you gotta wipe off your brush and start clean. Alright, let's go ahead and put one more coat on our um, one more yellow coat, <coughs> I should say, on our flowers. And theoretically, that should be it, except for our eyes. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of yellow ochre to it. Maybe some white. Oh, and then we still have some greenery, so we just we do still have a little bit. Greenery shouldn't take too long, but we don't want to forget that because that's going to fill in all the gaps.
So you're just going to fill in everywhere we have that. And if you need to add some type of um, some type of um, darkness to it, you're going to just add that to the inner the inner circle of it. a little here and there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and grab this green. I'm going to mix some blue in it and some white. Not before clearing off my things. I have no more space for it. So I'm going to take some of this green, I'm going to take some blue, mix that in, and I'm going to take some white, kind of create a, like a grayish green. I'm going to add a little bit more blue, a tiny bit of black. And I want it significantly bluer than the background, so that's kind of my, um, that's my gauge. Maybe a tiny bit of um, brown, but mostly like gray. So this is a really pretty color, but I want it gray. So I'm going to add a little bit more black to it. Maybe some brown. Okay, now we're getting to the color. Okay, I think this is a really good color. So I'm going to go ahead and get out my filbert, get it wet, make sure that no other colors are on it. And I'm going to, let's see. So I'm gonna start with like the bigger areas that I want. And I'm just gonna start adding a little bit of like leaves. I'm going to go ahead and go to a smaller brush because I think that'll be better. can add all of the the stems I'm 
And anywhere where there's like any sort of gap, you can just add some greenery. I'm just adding it kind of in all the places where I could see the sky behind it. I'm just going to add it there. And then on the bottoms of pretty much just all of the um, all of the flowers. I'm going to put a couple pieces of grass just kind of popping out. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a lighter version of pink to just put a couple highlights over here and then also put a highlight on his little eye and then we are all done. that is pretty much the end of class thank you so much for joining me I hope that you enjoyed this painting uh, make sure to share it with your friends if you uh, if you liked it if you enjoyed it um, I really appreciate it I also have a Facebook community where you can share your painting if you did paint with me whether or not you're painting live or you're painting it a year from now um, I hope to do one of these kind of yearly. I think that they're really, really fun. 
Um, so if you want to share that with me, you can go into my Facebook group. I will post that now. Um, yes, so you can, uh, you can go in and um, go to that link. It's Facebook. You just if you just look up uh, Samantha Anderson artist, um, you'll find it. Um, but yeah, you can go ahead and go into the albums, or you can just post it straight on the timeline. If you do that, it won't end up in the album. If you want it to be in the album for everybody else to see when they go to look for classes, uh, make sure you add it to the actual album. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, this one was really fun. Go paint the cow if you liked this one. Um, and yeah, we will see you next week for a, um, it's a Bob Ross inspired um, mountain landscape. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to have a lot of fun with the palette knife and just kind of that whole style that he does. Um, but yeah, we will see you next week and happy painting until then. Bye guys.